So in the last video, I showed what the dot product actually means and why we use this formula. Um, and we did a few examples here. And then I said in the next video, I'd show why this is also a formula for the dot product. So we're gonna have to kind of use a more geometric kind of um, interpretation than kind of this more, I suppose, everyday one. And the way we can do that is by going back to our original diagram, except now we're talking about the X and Y components. So now we're gonna start using um, the I and J vectors. So I wrote vector A in terms of as XAI plus YAJ. So XA is just the X component of vector A and y is the y component of vector a. I did the same for b here. And then if we want to do geometry on this, uh, we need to figure out what the third side is. So the third side, I guess in this case, it's a vector because we we're talking about a vector diagram, is this one. So what is this? So one way that you can think about vectors is a journey. So this white vector is the same as starting here and ending here. So how can we do that in terms of vectors that we actually know? Well, we see that vector b, we can go along vector b, we can go down vector b like this. And we can go up vector a like that and then we end at our end destination here so what is that mathematically we're doing vector b but backwards so vector b is going to the top left but we're going to the bottom right along vector b so another way of writing this is this is minus vector b and then we're following vector a as it is so we're doing plus vector a so this side is just uh this vector here is just minus vector b plus vector a and you could use uh you might be able to use the um you can use the parallelogram method to verify that if you just write b the other way around and you uh, you can show using the parallelogram for adding vectors method that this is indeed the resultant of the two. Um, so now that we have our three sides, in order to do geometry on this, instead of having these as vectors, we need them as side lengths. So I'm going to redraw the diagram uh, as I have it down here. So now uh, we're talking about a triangle, not vectors, and these are all the magnitudes. So now we just need to figure out what the magnitude of each vector is. And the way we can do that is using Pythagoras' theorem. I'll show the formula for the first one, but I won't for the rest of them. So let's say for vector A, we want to figure out what the magnitude is. Here's how we do it. We have this side is XA. As we have up here, that's the I component. The vertical one is YA, sorry. And then the hypotenuse is the length of vector A. So the length of vector A is just equal to the x component squared plus the y component squared, which means that the magnitude of vector A is the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And it's the same for every vector. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing now for uh, the other two. So vector B then will be equal to the square root of the x component plus the y component. And now for um, vector minus b plus a, we need to do a little bit more. So we need to first of all write it as a vector, which I should have done earlier. So minus vector b, b plus vector a. Remember, when you're adding vectors, you do the i components and the j components separately since they don't interfere with each other. So minus vector b, that's gonna be minus xb. And we have plus vector a, which is xa in the i direction. And then we'll have plus, and then for vector b, we take, make it a minus, we'll have minus yb. Let me just move it over slightly. And then we'll have plus whatever vector a is, which is y a. And that's in the j direction. Therefore, the magnitude of vector minus vector b plus vector a will be the square root of minus xb plus xa squared plus minus yb plus ya squared. It's kind of like the distance formula in a trigonometry. Or not trigonometry, sorry, coordinate geometry. And you can also see that because there's a minus, the ones in front of the B have a minus, and there's a plus in front of the ones with the A, so it all kind of checks out. So I'm going to get rid of this, and now we have our three kind of magnitudes, and we can use those to figure out, uh, not to figure out, but we can use those with some trigonometry now. So if we want to relate an angle and three sides together, a good way to do that usually is the cosine rule. So if we're using the cosine rule with this angle here, how the way we do that is that would be, my, uh, the top side is opposite the angle, so that's going to be the first thing we write. So we'll have minus vector b plus vector a squared. The magnitude will be vector a squared plus the magnitude of vector b squared minus 2 magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b times the cos of the angle between them. So now I'd advise you to pause the video now and see if you can m figure out how this equation proves that this is the same as this. In other words, this is another formula for the dot product. So I'd suggest you pause the video and give that a go now. So now I'm going to show you how to do it. So we can just, first of all, sub in these. So we're squaring these magnitudes, but since there's a square root here, it'll cancel out anyway. 
So what we'll get is we'll get um, minus xb plus xa squared plus minus uh, yb plus ya squared equals, and then for the magnitude of a, that's this, so we'll have xa squared plus ya squared, and then for vector b, it's the same thing, we'll have xb squared plus yb squared, so we have minus 2, and then do you notice anything about this? This is actually the definition of the dot product that we had up here. So this right here is actually just equal to the dot product of a and b. Okay, now we can expand out these brackets and you'll see this is where the magic happens. So if we expand out all these brackets, we get xb squared minus 2xb xa plus xa squared plus yb squared minus 2yb ya plus ya squared equals, and then the right hand side is staying the same. Now we notice some really nice cancellations happen. xb squared, we have xb squared on this side. xa squared, we have xa squared on this side. yb squared, we have yb squared on this side. And ya squared, we have ya squared on this side. They all cancel out. And all we're left with is minus 2xb xa minus 2yb ya equals to minus 2 times the dot product of a at vector a and vector b. Dividing across by minus 2 tells us that xb xa minus yb ya is the exact same as the dot product between a and b, if it would undo properly. We have now proved that, that this is a second alternative formula for the dot product. And this, oops, I can make that bigger. This is the exact same as this formula. So instead of uh, in the applied maths exam, uh, for in the one of the years where you have to find the angle between two vectors, instead of having to do all this messy trigonometry, all you had to do was figure out what the dot product was using this formula. And then you could easily figure out the magnitude of the two vectors and then let these equal to each other. And then you can find the angle using by letting these two different definitions of the dot product equal to each other. So it kind of saves you from doing all this messy trigonometry, but this is where it comes from. So hopefully from this very short series, you've learned why this is the definition of a dot, well, not why this is the definition, but what the dot product actually means, kind of like in an intuitive sense, and why these two are the same in a more kind of, I suppose, vigorous sense. So yeah, I hope you found this mini series helpful, and you can leave any comments or anything if you have questions, and yep. Yeah.